Now we come to the question of navigating arrays. There are two principal functions for navigating arrays. They are dollar sign data and dollar sign order. Dollar sign data is used to determine if a node exists, if it has data, and if it has descendants. Dollar sign order is used to determine the next ascendant or descendant value of an index at a given level in a tree. Dollar sign data returns a zero if you pass it an array reference that does not exist. It returns a 1 if you pass it a node or an array reference that does exist and has data. If, you, if it returns a 1, 0, it means the node exists, has no data, but has descendants. Uh, if it returns 1, 1, it means the node exists, has data, and has descendants. All of those are possibilities. It's impossible to have a node by itself that has no descendants, that has no data. Uh, that's just the way the language works. Dollar sign order um, gives you the next higher or lower value of the last index of an array reference. So if you pass it an array reference that's got three indices, it will return you the next ascendant or descendant value of the third index. So if I say up arrow a sub i comma j comma k, k is the last one, dollar sign order would give you the next ascendant or descendant value of the index k. Um, Dollar sign order has a possible second argument. Uh, if it's a minus one, it means you want to go in descending order. Uh, if you don't put anything there, or if you put a, a one, a plus one, it'll give it to you in ascending order. Ascending order is the default. There is another function called dollar sign next. It's not used much anymore. You may see it in some old code. It is similar to dollar sign order. It's got a few differences, but it's the same basic idea. It only goes in ascending order, by the way. All right, let's look at some examples here. First of all, we have um, we destroy all previous exam um, instances of the uh, global array A, just in case there's any debris around that would alter our result. And then we go in and we initialize um, a global array called up arrow A, uh, 1 through 9, index values 1 through 9. We just put a 1 in, this purely for examples. So we've got nine elements in consecutive order in the array up arrow A. So if I write, if I ask the question, write out dollar sign data of up arrow a sub one, I'll get a one because uh, up arrow a sub one exists. Uh, it has data. It has no descendants, not yet anyway. If I say write dollar sign order up arrow a uh, with the empty string, it will write me one. If you if you give as a value of the index the empty string, that tells dollar sign order that you want uh, the first value of the index. Or if you're going in reverse order, you want to start with the last value. Dollar sign, the, the, the empty string is used to indicate that we are going, starting at the beginning or at the end. Uh, so since we're, we didn't put a minus one in the dollar sign order, we're going in ascending value. So the first value of the only index, as it turns out, in up arrow A, the array up arrow A, is uh, one. Uh, if I ask for a dollar sign order of up arrow A sub one, I'll get two, and so forth. If I ask for dollar sign order of up arrow a sub nine, which is the last one I've got, I'll get an empty string. When you run out of them, you get the empty string. All right, let's um, let's mess it up a bit. Um, let's um, let's let's go in here. This is a bit of extra code. It doesn't really count. Um, for i goes from one to nine. For j goes from one to five set up arrow a sub i comma j equal to j. What we're doing is for each each node 1 through 9 of the first top level, we're creating a subtree 1 through 5. So a sub 1 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as its second indices, and so forth and so on. All right, so the question becomes, um, so it becomes a two-dimensional array, um, essentially a um, two-dimensional fully filled in matrix with nine rows and five columns. Uh, so if I ask the question dollar sign data of up arrow uh, a sub 5, I'm going to get a, a 1, 1 back, 11, because a sub 5 exists, it has a value, and it has a descendant. It has several descendants, as a matter of fact, but it does have descendants. If I ask dollar sign data of up arrow a sub 5, comma 1, I'll get a 1, because uh, up arrow a 5, comma 1 exists, it has data, it has no descendants. If I ask for up arrow a 5 comma 15, I'll get a 0. It doesn't exist. There is no such node. If I ask dollar sign order of up arrow a 5 comma empty string, I'll get a 1. 
I'll get the first value of the second index. Dollar sign order gives you the gives you a value for the last index of the array reference you passed. Now I've passed a I've passed two indices and a reference that's got two indices, so it'll be the uh, it'll be the second index that I'll get the value for. And since in, I'm in ascending mode and I give it a give it an empty string, I will get the first value, which of course is one. If I were to say right dollar sign order up arrow a uh, some five comma two, I'll get a three because three is the next ascending um, value at that level. Um, if I were to say set up arrow a sub 10 equals to 10, okay, I'm creating an element, um, write dollar sign order of a sub uh, 1, I'll get, um, I'll get one uh, dollar sign order, order of a sub 1, I will get 10. Because in my system we use uh, strict, it is a strict ASCII collating sequence. There is an issue when you're dealing with numeric indices as to whether or not you're dealing, what is your collating sequence. If it's a strictly numeric collating sequence, uh, I would expect to see the value uh, coming back from this dollar sign order to be two, because two follows one. In a strictly ASCII sense, I would expect it to see 10, because 10 is in the ASCII collating sequence, in other words, character strings, um, the next value. So you need to know what collating system your system is working in. Some of them allow you to set several different collating systems, uh, some of them um, uh, restrict you. In my particular case, I restrict everything to ASCII because there's a lot of overhead associating with them, uh, associated with numbers and uh, and generating them in no numeric collating sequence. But nonetheless, check what your system does. If I were to say um, write dollar sign order up arrow a sub ten, it'll come back with two because in ASCII sequence that's the next value. Um, if I say set up arrow a eleven comma one equal to eleven, now remember we do not have a a top level array element called 11. We only have 1 through 10. Uh, 1, through 10. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We, don't, we have not created an ele uh, element 11. But here we're creating an element 11, 1. Okay. If I say write dollar sign data of up arrow 11, I'm going to get a 10 back. That's the value for dollar sign data. It's not the value stored at the node. Uh, what dollar sign data is telling you is that the node a sub 11 exists. It has descendants, but a sub 11 has no data. See, when you created a sub 11, it was in the process of creating a sub 11 comma one. That does have data, but you didn't put any data in uh, the top level node a, uh, 11. Um, so when it comes back from dollar sign data, it tells you yes, it has descendants. Uh, yes, it exists. No, it has no data. Um, if I ask for the um, um, dollar sign data of um, 11 comma 1, of course I'll get a 1. It exists. It has data. Now uh, we look at um, a few examples here where we've um, initialized um, our array. Here's an example where we are going through and printing out a matrix. We're printing out a matrix of the, of the array we were dealing with above. So uh, start off with i is equal to empty string forever do set i equal to dollar sign order up arrow a sub i. So what do I get back the first time? Well, since i initially is the empty string, the first value I'll get back is 1. That's the first value in the array a, uh, the global array a. But on the next line, I check to find out if the, if the value I got back is empty. If the value I got back is empty, I'm done. Okay, I'm using my break here. That's non-standard. It takes me out of the loop. It's quicker than going back up to the up to the uh, four level and exiting out that way. But what we're doing is we're checking to see if there's an empty string coming back. There is. We're done. Otherwise, I write out row space the value of i space, and now I'm going to write the contents of the row. Uh, so now we get to the next statement here. If dollars and the question question is, is there a row? There may not be. Um, so if dollar sign data of um, up arrow a sub 1 is greater than 1. Now, dollar sign data of a sub i will be greater than 1 if there are descendants. So if a sub i, whatever it happens to be, has descendants, this predicate will be true. The if statement will execute. In which case, I set j equal to the empty string, and I have another do forever here. Notice the extra blanks because they're required because there's no arguments for the for and there's no argument to the do. The do, of course, invokes the second level here, the, the second level indented block. 
Well, this part here, the if statement, isn't going to be, that'll be evoked after we come back from the do. That'll be executed after we come back from the do. But the do takes us into this block. And what we do, we set j equal to dollar sign order of up arrow a sub i comma j. The first time we go down, j is the empty string. So the first value of j coming back will be the first value of j at that level. And then we will write it out. If j is not equal to the empty string, we'll write out j um, and a space. Now, the reason why I do the if it's not equal to empty, because the order could have returned us an empty string, in which case we probably don't want to write. It wouldn't hurt anything. It's only going to be an empty string followed by a blank. But um, it, I mean, there may be other things on the line. But So we, we're using the post conditional here to prevent writing in the case we ran out of J's. When we run out of J's, we finish. Well, anyway, at the end of this write, we go back up to the do where we were executing. And there's more on the line, so we go to the if. The if asks the question, um, is j the empty string? If j is the empty string, we quit, uh, which quits this for, which terminates the if, because the if is now finished, and we move down to the, out to the outer block, and we write out a new line character. This is the proper way of doing uh, a mumps um, block, where in something inside the block is used to terminate the invoking um, for loop or whatever it happened to be. Um, and in the case where J, we ran out of J's, the, uh, uh, the J will in fact be an empty string and that'll cause us to quit the for. And, um, and when the for is done, the if is done and we move on to the next line. Okay, let's look at some details of the previous program. I have it uh, written in code here. Um, and you see there's the program from the example more or less. Um, kill all previous examples um, or instances of the global array A. Um, then initialize it. Uh, at the top level, we're going to initialize it 1 through 9. And for each of the elements at the top level, there will be an initialization of 1 through 5 at the second level. And we see that on this line here. Um, all right. Um, now what happens? Now we go in there and we set i is equal to empty. We enter a for loop. Uh, forever, notice the two blanks, do, that invokes the first block, the quit comes later. We enter that block and we say, well, set i equal to dollar sign order of up arrow a sub i. Uh, i has a value of empty the first time through, so the value of i coming out will be 1. Eventually we will uh, get to this and we'll do it and we get an empty string, meaning we've run out of values of i at this level, in which case we will quit. We take That takes us back to the invoking do. Then we do again another quit if i is equal to empty, and that ends the whole thing because that will skip all of the uh, blocks which appear below us. Uh, so anyway, so that takes us out back to the invoking do, and the invoking do will then um, check to see if um, um, it will, will then exit as appropriate. Um, that's where I use the break. It's quicker. But anyway, that's the standard. Um, so we write out the word row, and we write out i, and we write out a blank. And then we ask the question, does a sub i have descendants? Yes, it does. Uh, and if it does, we will then set j equal to empty. Again, another infinite loop. Notice the two blanks. There's their quit situation, same as before. If j comes back empty, um, we will quit this inner block, or we'll quit, the, quit this um, four, and uh, that will take us back to, the, uh, to the, the right command on the bottom because we will not enter the doubly indented, double dotted um, block. We will simply go right down to the right command. All right, um, we get into here. We uh, set j equal to the uh, next value at, at the second level. Um, as long as it's not empty, we'll write out J um, because um, if it's empty, of course, we don't want to write it out. And when we're finished, um, um, when this, is, this inner loop here has completely exhausted, when we get a value of J is empty, we'll exit back and we'll hit the right, and that creates the new line character at the end of the row that we're writing out. Uh, so if I, if I run it here, uh, you, notice, you, you notice it had the... Um, um, pound sign exclamation point uh, figure at the front, which means it's if you make it executable, you can run it directly. Uh, at least that's ver my version. So it's ord.mumps, and there you see the rows. Um, the first number, row 1, 2, 3, 4, up through 9, that's produced by and the outer loop. The inner loop produces the rest. All right, let's go in and mess around with it. Um, let's see. Uh, how about we add some, um, uh, some additional... Um, well, let, let, let's uh, 
instead of going up by ones, let's go up by well, let's go let's go up by tens. Um, okay, uh, and over here, well, if the nine will no longer be the limit, we'll make the um, we'll make uh, ninety the upper limit. Um, okay, uh, and now in here we can uh, we can have these go up by uh, ten as well, and. Uh, Upper limit will be, will be five. It'll be uh, fifty in order for everything to work. Let's see what this looks like. What we're doing now is creating a sparse array. So um, a sub one will exist, but a sub two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten will not. A sub eleven will exist. Uh, a sub uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and so forth will not exist. So it's a sparse array. A lot of elements don't exist. Now, if I run it. You see, you get something a little different, somewhat similar, but different. So you see the values of i are 1, 11, 21, because you're incrementing by 10 and you're starting at 1. So it's 11, 21, up through 81. We don't have a 91 because uh, when it got, when it got uh, to 91, we quit uh, because that's greater than 90. And then on the rows themselves, it's, um, uh, again, by 10, 1, 11, 21, 31, 41. Uh, we put 50 as the upper limit. So when it incremented j to be 51, it was over the limit, so we don't get one. All right, so it's a sparse array, and that's really what we're looking at with these um, with these um, navigating functions. They allow us to go through arrays where, in a normal language like you know Fortran or C or Java or and, you know we expect each element to be there. But in a global array or in a mumps array situation, they don't have to be there. They're only there if we create them. All right, um, let's mess it up a little further. Um, let's say for uh, i equals um, two. Um, by 10 uh, to uh, 90. Uh, set up arrow a sub i equal to i. Now what are we doing here? Uh, well I'm creating elements 2, 12, and so forth, uh, but I'm not creating any descendants. These elements will not have descendants. They exist, they're at level 1, but they have no level 2 dependents. Alright, so what will this look like? And then you see, you see them. And by the way, you're seeing the thing coming out in uh, collating sequence order, which we mentioned earlier. My system works in strictly ASCII string order. Um, numbers come out as, in their ASCII string interpretation. That will probably not be the same in whatever system you're using. Although your system may have an ASCII collating um, um, option, uh, collating sequence option, it's, it's more efficient. And for the most part, we're not using these as numeric arrays. Okay, so the first row, uh, row 1, does indeed have descendants. Row 11 does indeed have descendants. Row 12, however, doesn't. That's one of our added ones. It has no descendants. Row 2, which you see 1, 11, 12, 2 is the correct uh, ASCII collating sequence for strings. Um, no descendants. And we can see those that have, don't have any descendants. So why are we not seeing them? We're not seeing them because of this line right here, where we, where we ask the question, does a sub i have any descendants? Is the value of dollar sign data greater than one? If it if they have descendants, it'll be greater than one. Uh, either be one zero or one one, both of which are treated as greater than one. In which case, we enter the inner um, block here, which writes out the descendants. If this is not true, we'll simply skip on to the right um, new line character, and we're done.